Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Warm temperatures with little to no humidity and a cool north breeze. Hard to ask for anything more in July except for more rain. And we'll see when our chances improve coming up. It's a sentencing here at the federal courthouse that the prosecutors are calling an epic crime. And in fact, it's so big, it's not just child pornography. The prosecutors are going after the defendants as if they were part of a mob. We'll have the latest. Breaking right now, President Trump says it's all just a big misunderstanding and that he misspoke when it comes to Russia's involvement in the 2016 election. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be Russia. Sort of a double negative. Those comments from the president just a short time ago are just part of a stunning chain of events that has included widespread condemnation for both political parties. And now the president says he accepts the U.S. intelligence conclusion that Russia did, in fact, try to play a role in the election. Jennifer Johnson following the reaction and the fallout from Washington. Jennifer. The criticism keeps coming, but now the president is trying to clarify what he meant to say yesterday. Facing negative headlines from coast to coast, President Trump today in damage control mode, telling Americans what he wouldn't tell Russian President Vladimir Putin. I accept our intelligence community's conclusion that Russia's meddling in the 2016 election took place. While still saying there was no collusion, the president said he misspoke yesterday when he said he saw no evidence and no motivation for Russian interference. I don't see any reason why it would be. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be Russia. Lawmakers on both sides condemning the president's words in Helsinki. In my mind, the weakest, most pathetic display by an American president that I've ever witnessed. It was a stunning betrayal of the country and inexplicable at so many levels. President Trump sided with Vladimir Putin over his own intelligence agencies, who all concluded Russia meddled in the 2016 presidential election. They did interfere in elections. It's really clear. There should be no doubt about that. Lawmakers lacking an explanation and concerned about how this will play out globally. If the president was willing to dismiss American concerns in public, what in the heck did he say in private? I think that President Trump is um, harder to, to defend than he is to explain sometimes. But the president defending himself on Twitter, writing, the fake news is going crazy. President Trump also left open the possibility that countries other than Russia could have been involved in the election meddling. In Washington, Jennifer Johnson, Local 4. All right, Jennifer, more to come on that over this next 90 minutes of news. Our other top story at five, four men sentenced in what prosecutors say is an epic case of Internet child exploitation. Yeah, the charges here are so broad, the feds charge them using a method normally reserved for organized crime rings. Rod Maloney spent the day in federal court. Uh, so, Rod, you spoke to the father of one of the many victims in this case. Right. In fact, I spoke to the father and some other parents as well, and there are hundreds, and I do mean hundreds, of girls victims in this case. And we're told, they all told the same story, that their daughters' lives have been forever changed, that they've become depressed and sullen and oftentimes even suicidal after having been bright-eyed Girl Scouts and playing sports and the like, and then stopping because of one thing, going into an Internet chat room. For any parent not concerned what goes on in internet chat rooms using video cameras, this case serves as a vital warning. Groups of men working together around the globe disguise themselves as teenage boys, invite young girls to join them in chat rooms, then talk them into sexual activity, and not just disrobing, but actual sexual activity, sometimes even with friends and worse. In Detroit federal courtroom today, we heard the tale of the men amping up their contacts, threatening to hurt family members if the girls didn't do more. Some recorded disrobing after having having cut themselves in suicidal self-destruction. Pleading guilty in this rarely used child exploitation enterprise are 49-year-old Terry Kovac, arrested in Nevada, 31-year-old Felipe Dominguez Neha, arrested in Arkansas, 42-year-old Eric Robinson, arrested in Minnesota, and 38-year-old Princeton-educated Dr. Noah Isley, nabbed in New York City. Parents lined up to speak at the sentencing today, one saying, quote, evil has been brought into our lives, a brood of vipers hunting our children, end quote.
Another said, these vultures, precise, practiced, skilled predators, you took away the innocence of childhood from my child. Justice is the maximum sentence, end quote. Judge Stephen Murphy could have given them all life sentences, but in exchange for the guilty pleas, Kovacs received 37 years, Dominguez Neha 41, Robinson 34 years, and Dr. Isley 35 years in federal prison. Now, there are other elements of crime here, and child pornography being a very small corner of it and the least of the crimes in here. This is really just the tip of the iceberg about what we sat and listened to for six hours here. Four men were sentenced today. Two more expect to be sentenced tomorrow, and there is a belief that this is a global enterprise and that they are searching for more and that there could be more arrests in the days to come. Back to you, Kimberly. Definitely and sick indeed, Rod. I'm curious, were there any of the victims there in court today? Uh, yes, there were a number of them. Uh, one of them, they brought in a comfort dog to help her feel better. She was that anxious. They were going to get up and, and speak, but as things got so emotional in that courtroom, neither of the girls who were there decided that they would get up and talk. Instead, their statements were read by the attorney, the, the deputy U.S. attorneys there that were managing the case. I can imagine how difficult that must be. All right. Thanks. Well, a different day feels like a different day. The oppressive heat and humidity has moved out. The sun is shining. Of course, it's coming in the middle of the week. I guess that this is true. we had to pick our, our druthers. That's a beautiful picture, no. though, from uh, our live cams out there. We definitely take this weather bend for a while after the sweltering past few days. Oh, absolutely, uh, Kim and Devin. And when you're in the middle of July, you sort of lower your standards as to what you would consider acceptable. But this is really nice. You get all the warmth of uh, mid-July without the humidity, some low 80s, but there are a smattering of 70s out there. You've got a cool north wind and you've got no hint of humidity. In fact, that's been pushed all the way down south of the Ohio River uh, and it's not coming back at least for a while. We've got several days where we get to enjoy these comfortable conditions and it's going to be hard to beat this evening. Temperatures sliding into the 70s, even 60s by midnight. And we're going to have a cool start if you're sleeping with the windows open tonight. We'll look at those lows and some pretty good chances of rain in the seven day forecast. All ahead, guys. Detroit police are searching for a group of 10 men involved in a pair of attempted smash and grabs on the city's east side. The first happened at the Chase Bank on Gratiot near Warren Avenue. Investigators say the suspects tried to take an ATM, but they couldn't get it free. Minutes later, a second break in happened at Knight Pharmacy on Jefferson. Video from the scene shows a large hole in the wall where a vehicle slammed into the building. Police say the suspects were unable to take anything, though a black Chevy Tahoe was later found on East Grand Boulevard in Frederick. Police are looking for a 1999 Ford van that may have been involved. If you have any information, call police. Now to a local four update. Another staff member has been arraigned in connection with the abuse of three mental health patients. 74 year old Marjorie Frank was charged with failure to report abuse of a mental health patient. That brings the total to 10 employees who were involved in a case at Livonia Cope facility. Prosecutors say the patients were viciously attacked and in some cases strangled by staff members. We also have an update from White Lake, which is where the body of a missing swimmer has now been found. Sheriff's deputies say the 55 year old man went underwater Sunday afternoon and never came back up. Dive teams returned to the water this morning and they were able to recover the body. Uh, White Lake is open again as well as the surrounding roads. A Detroit mother overcome with emotion as she realizes the seriousness of the charges against her and the drowning death of her own baby. Police say that child fell through a hole in the ground floor into a flooded basement below and nobody noticed it until it was far too late. Larry Spruill was in court for the arraignment and Larry, I guess this was supposed to have happened yesterday. It did, Kimberly, and we were here yesterday, but Jordan never showed up. We later found out that police say they could not find her. But today she showed up and she faced the judge and she heard the charges she's now facing for the first time. Calling case number 1660525015, people state of Michigan versus Josiah Michelle Jordan. From the look of Deja Jordan's face, her reality is hitting her for the first time. Shock and disbelief easily visible as she realizes the seriousness of what happened. Tuesday, the judge set a $25,000 bond for Deja Jordan. She's facing manslaughter and child abuse charges in the second degree for the death of her own daughter, 11-month-old Kamaya Davis. 
Police say on July 6, little Kamaya fell through a floor inside the home. She landed in the basement filled with water and sewage. She drowned. Jordan told police she left her daughter with the babysitter, Tanya Peterson, while she ran errands. Police say both Jordan and Peterson knew about the unsafe conditions in the bedroom. And that second woman, the babysitter, Tanya Peterson, she was also supposed to show up in court yesterday, but she did not. We are told that she will face a judge. She's expected to face a judge tomorrow morning. We're live in downtown Detroit tonight. Larry Spruill, Local 4. Such a hard story to, to understand, Larry. It's just, just senseless. But um, I'm wondering as far as the mother is concerned, we saw her there in court. She didn't appear to say anything. Did she have anything to say? And then what comes next for her? Well, well, Kimberly, she did not really speak at all. She just answered the judge's questions. And as you can see from the video, she seemed very upset, shock, and then just disbelief this is all happening. She's due back in court July 24th. All right, Larry. Other news, his own family calls him a monster. We always had a fear of him. I remember being six years old and my mom told me if he ever came to try to pick me up from school that I would have to scream at the top of my lungs. New tonight, a judge delivers his sentence for a man who he says repaid his aunt and uncle's kindness with murder. And they didn't get very far. Some wild moments at Metro this morning involving a rental car and a group of people willing to stop at nothing it seemed to get their hands on a rental car. Coco. Officials in Detroit and Canada came together today, and some of them are calling this a very big win, saying today has been decades in the making. But there are still some challenges ahead. 